a million different kinds of maps and the idea of Power BI. Let's go into Power BI and I will um, show you what we can see here. All right, so um, if you have Power BI installed, it'll just be in your menu. One weird thing is that it's almost always under M for Microsoft rather than under P for Power BI. And I know you know your alphabet, but man, is that confusing and I've lost time trying to find it. Um, on our view.truman machines, um, you might see that as well. Um, again, if you don't have Microsoft Office, you can download Power BI for free. I'm not going to walk through that, but it's pretty easy, like my downloading you know, other Microsoft products. When you open it up, you get a screen that looks like this. Um, and what you can see here is it first wants you to add data to your report. So I'm going to just import really quickly a data set. I'm going to use the abalone data, which is actually your homework data set um, for this week. It's a bunch of snails. Um, and the data about the size and weight of snails by sex, which you didn't know sex of snails was important. Um, and these particular snails are from Tasmania, which other than being cool is okay. All right, we click on it and you can see here it is just bringing in from the Excel chart. Then you click load. You can do transforms before you do that if that's something you need, but it's pretty easy to bring it in. Again, it looks just like working in Microsoft. Where it's a little bit different is once you get to the screen, it doesn't show you the data. You can come over here and this actually will show you the data. And again, it looks like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, as you do that, but we are up here in the report, or you can look down here at model, but we're going to just use report for now. Anyway, you come over here to where it says visualizations, and let's say we want to make a scatter plot, and you want to do abalone data, because again, that's the data set we have, and let's say you want to compare the diameter. Um, I clicked on scatter plot already, so we want to do the diameter versus um, the whole weight. So probably not the most interesting uh, graphical conclusion that larger snails weigh more than smaller ones. I'll make this graph big. And you can see what's weird is it wants to give you summary data. So this is actually the average weight by the average, um, the average weight by the average um, diameter. There we go. Um, as we do that, I actually want to do the other way. Jump. Diameter on the bottom and weight on the other one. That just has to do with independent dependent variables. Now we could split it. So if we wanted to say split it by sex, we could do that and select all three. Um, but that's not actually um, very interesting at this point. What we'd rather do is actually look at the raw data. So if we go in here and we don't summarize, oh, this is the sum. So we look at that and now you can see, we can actually see the raw data. And now we can, uh, color it by sex. So here at where it says legend, I'm just going to drag sex down to it. And now we can see how the three colors are different. Um, again, with the filtering, I could say, let's only look at female snails. Um, female snails are blue and red or male snails are red. You can go in and fit, fiddle with those colors if you have to have boys are blue and girls are pink, but they're snails. Um, and then what's interesting thing about the data set is that there are these indeterminate snails, which are young snails that you can't actually tell if they're male or female, at least from the outside. How do you tell the sex of a snail from the outside? I don't know. It's probably an interesting question and I should, I like using this data set enough, I should probably go learn how to do it. Anyway, that's very straightforward. If you wanna change to another kind of plot, you just come over here and you click on it and it will make, not that one. Uh, um, and it will make a plot. You can see that if the plot doesn't make sense, it doesn't really uh, give you what you want here. But again, now we could go back, um, say we do want to make a bar chart, and we do want to look at diameter by sex. And you can see how the male snails are, in fact, slightly bigger than uh, the female snails, which are bigger than the uh, indeterminate snails, because again, they're they're younger infant snails. Um, there are other features here, and again, in the lab, you're going to walk through them, but one I just want to mention is that you can uh, go to a script window where you could actually include R uh, code, so even if you don't love R and you don't want to use it as your main software tool, those commands that you're learning in this class, uh, you could stick in. It actually takes Python, um, and again, it makes a whole bunch of other 
kinds of charts. Um, software like this, you tend to learn just by playing with it. So that's why I wanted to get through this stuff quickly so that you could get to actual lab where you walk through it. So again, uh, Dr. Bergowska has a lab for you to walk through, and I think uh, you'll find that pretty useful. And my guess is once you get the hang of it, um, you'll find that it's a pretty easy tool to use. That said, R is still more powerful. When we get to the data cleaning stuff next week, you'll see that it can do a lot of things that um, Power BI or Tableau can't do. And so um, I think for most of you, um, the R that you learn will still be um, pretty useful. So there you go.